Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Thursday morning to you all. Hope you guys are waking up and feeling good out there this morning and having a wonderful start to your day and a great week out there so far. Here to bring you the latest that we got on what's going to happen weather-wise across the entire lower 48 for your Thursday. But we'll kickstart this video talking about the tropics. We had some dramatic changes overnight and model guidance, uh, and this is also starting to ooze into the morning model guidance also. So, uh, there's a shot that this has legs. Of course, we mentioned, I believe it was Monday night that we had a significant shift during the day. And then uh, from then, basically all the way to about yesterday, uh, you know, the signal kind of disappeared. The origins of the signal, if you will, was always still there. Uh, but model guidance definitely dropped off on anything developing out of this cluster of showers and storms out here in the Atlantic. Now it is upticked again and pretty significantly a lot more than Monday. So we're going to break that down right off the dot in this video. Not going to lie, some of this model guidance you're going to see is quite concerning. Um, of course, we don't know exactly what's going to happen, but folks, it is peak hurricane season. Uh, you know, some people would consider still, you know, early September peak hurricane season, but this is the beginning stages of the peak portion of hurricane season. So we're going to break all this down right off the dot for you folks, go over what's going on out there right now, latest from the National Hurricane Center and all the overnight and model uh, and morning model guidance that we have for you folks. And then we'll talk about the ensemble. Uh, guidance. Then we'll break down what's going to happen weather-wise across the entire Louisville 48 uh, for your uh, Thursday. Now, Tropical Tidbits is down, so uh, this is going to look a little bit different uh, than you folks are used to. You know, un unfortunately, you know, it happens. Uh, Levi, which is the guy that runs Tropical Tidbits, you know, gives us that site for free to use for people like me and you. So it's hard to complain when the site has issues, but it definitely will um, affect the video a little bit, but I think all in all, you'll get all the information you need. So if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. If anybody has anything that I can pray about or pray over as always, please put those in the comments below. Thank you for the encouraging words, thoughts, and uh, and the prayers, more importantly for my wife. Uh, she had a better day yesterday, and we just hope that she continues to have a uh, a strong finish to her week. So let's get rocking and rolling. So this is the Atlantic. We got the MDR, main development region, uh, tropical Atlantic, and then we got the Caribbean here, and we got the Gulf of Mexico. And by the way, <clears throat> the Gulf of Mexico is doing some weird things right now. We got this area of shower and storm activity that has a little bit of a spin to it. And when we break down the weather for today across the lower 48, we're going to zoom into Louisiana. Interesting feature we need to watch over the next 24 to 48 hours in the western Gulf of Mexico. But we're going to focus primarily on what's going on out here in the central Atlantic right now, which is this area right here. You see these colors in like yellow, orange, red. This indicates just shower and storm activity out here in the Atlantic. Um, so what we watch for is that we get a dominant piece of energy that kind of gets going, consolidates, dominant vortice. Um, Vort Max, just energy. And right now there's nothing like that, but model guidance is starting to like the idea of something consolidating and eventually developing once it oozes into the Caribbean. It moves into the Caribbean and eventually, you know, some models show this developing into a an all-out strong hurricane. Now we do have a pretty robust tropical wave way out here in the eastern Atlantic that's came off Africa. Is this going to survive? It, it most certainly could, but of course a lot of our focus is on this right here but of course your eyes go to that probably right off the dot because it does look like more of an explosion of convection uh, but this is what's going on right now no storms that are trackable i mean no name storms out there the next name storm is the f name francine and we're not tracking that yet but that could change over the next several days now we look at the latest from the national hurricane center <clears throat> they have stuck to their guns they have not dropped this over the last few days we still have a 20 percent chance of tropical development in this yellow area right here that you see. So the origins of this is right over the central Atlantic right now. The same area I just showed you guys, that area right here. And I meant to circle it um, because I know some people just kind of listen. Um, well, I would say the people who listen to the video, it doesn't matter if I draw on it or not, but I know that not everybody can actually watch the entire thing. They might just throw on their headphones. But if you are watching, this is the circled area that I'm talking about right here and if you're listening it's just out here in the middle of the atlantic so you keep going here and we go back to this 20 percent chance for something to develop um in the next seven days in this yellow area now what does that something mean well when they say there's a percent chance of something developing that means uh a depression or a named storm okay so 
a defined low level circulation would make whatever tropical energy out here dubbed a tropical depression. So it's got to have a defined low level circulation for this to be a depression. And then, of course, it can strengthen to a storm, which would give it a name, which in this case would be Francine. So this is what we got going on out here per the National Hurricane Center. If model guidance continues to show stuff that I'm about to show you guys over the next few hours, then this will get bumped up from a 20 to a 30 percent chance, maybe as early as the next update here at about 7, 30, 8 o'clock this morning. So this might go from that 20 to the 30. Um, not saying, you know, Mitch called it. I know some people in the comments will go, Mitch, you, you nailed it. Um, to, to me, it's not it's not difficult. What you do is you kind of match model agreement up with the next update. National Hurricane Center sees it too. And you can just kind of guess and take an easy guess, honestly, if they're going to upgrade it or not. So I do think if we continue to see it, I mean, maybe by the time that uh, we get into this evening, we could have a bump up to a 40% chance. We'll just have to see what happens. So let's go over all the latest model guidance. This is the latest European model. Now, what you're about to see on here, please do not take it as a conclusion. Like it, that, that's what's going to happen. But for my folks tuning in in the Caribbean, the, you know, this is going to be a bit alarming. So the latest Euro just did a total flip. So we'll start off by Labor Day morning, September 2nd. You see this blob of blue here? And remember, Tropical Tidbits is down, so we kind of just have to go to Weather Bell. I love looking at Tropical Tidbits when it comes to the tropics, but you just we just kind of have to roll with uh, Weather Bell. So it might be a little hard to see on your screen, but this is, your, this is the blue area. That's your tropical system. Now watch what happens here. This starts to move into the Lesser Antilles, Windward Islands, Leeward Islands. We're not exactly sure. It kind of begins to develop right over the Lesser Antilles, like, you know, Monday night into Tuesday. And then this gets fully into the Eastern Caribbean. We have 1,003 millibar lobes sometime Tuesday afternoon, September the 3rd, based off the European model from overnight, the latest one that we have. We keep this going. By the time we get into midday Wednesday of next week, six days from now, still pretty far out. September the 4th, we have a tropical storm, 993 millibar low. I know this is probably hard to see, but that's 993. Hopefully, you know, if you're watching on your phone, it might be harder to see. But just remember that my videos do have a, rev a resolution of 1080. Uh, but sometimes if you just jump on the video, then it defaults to 480, 720. There is a way to tweak it to 1080. So just, just so you guys know, I've not mentioned that in quite some time. Um, but you're starting to move into Thursday morning. All of a sudden, we have a hurricane south of uh, Hispaniola. That's a 981, if you can't see it, millibar storm. That would make this at least a category one hurricane. So all of a sudden, in the central to eastern um, Caribbean, might as well say central, you have an all-out hurricane. Okay, that's a pretty dramatic flip. If you turn around and you look at the model run from yesterday afternoon, nothing, just lower pressure. That's a significant shift. Okay, now you keep this going. And we go past seven days out, and we have a 978 Category 1-ish 2 hurricane uh, right near Jamaica, and it looks like it's beginning to turn north with a weakness to the with a weakness to the north, which we'll talk about more when we actually have a track a, tra a trackable system. And we have uh, a borderline major hurricane about to hit the southern coastline of Cuba, and it's heading north, which we know what's we know what's north of Cuba. The Bahamas, Florida, etc. So it's a 965 millibar hurricane. That's a high end category two, a low end major category three hurricane. So this has been a dramatic shift. And I know this might be hard to see, but that's a 965 millibar low pressure. There's different ways to look at this. I mean, you can look at the precipitation output here, and you know, there it is right there, even harder to see. And then we can look at the Vort Max here, which I, I like looking at, but it, it might just kind of throw some people off here. But you can see, you see how we have energy in the atmosphere in the mid to upper levels. Obviously, that's a dominant piece of energy because it's a strong hurricane. Now, what about the latest GFS? I actually looked at it right the last second before I jumped on here to see if it continued with its aggressive runs like it did with the OOZ. And it did. It actually doubled down on it, and it's even more significant. So we'll start off Monday morning, Labor Day morning. Got all kinds of things going on outside my house. We've had a loud train that lasted for 10 minutes. Now it sounds like I got about 18 jets over my house right now. I got an airport really close to my house, so that's probably why. But well, it is why. But you see this blob of blue here. That's a lower pressure. So we continue uh, to move into Tuesday morning, uh, September the 3rd. You know, it doesn't develop this as quick as the Euro. It, it, it lags a little bit. So this would just bring like an open wave into the Lesser Antilles. Not a big deal. 
That could change though. And then we start to get into Wednesday morning and still j just a blob of blue, just telling us that there's a lower pressure here at a tropical wave. And then it dramatically shifts from a 24 hour period. It goes from just a, a tropical wave to a tropical storm south of the Dominican Republic, Haiti, um, Hispaniola. Okay. And it's kind of taking the same route as the Euro, right? And then we go about a week from today. Um, and we have a strengthening tropical system. We go all the way to about one week, one week out. It's like next Thursday evening. All right, September the 5th, we have a 989 millibar tropical storm, low in category one hurricane. And uh, this is, I don't know how far we can go out here. Uh, let's make sure we got the entire run. And yeah, so we can go out a little bit further, uh, but this makes landfall right over Jamaica as a category one hurricane uh, about eight days from now goes over Jamaica and then kind of does what the Euro does and, you know, begins to head towards the Southern coastline of Cuba. And we'll go, we'll, we'll keep on going as far as we can. This makes landfall a little bit further um, west in the Southern coastline of Cuba and then goes right over Cuba. And then just remember, this is now at this point, 264 hours out. So, I mean, what, this is 11 days out. Uh, so unreliable time frame, but I, uh, but what, what I'm telling you here is, is like the Euro and the GFS agree with, I mean, this, it's not like one model is dramatically shifting and the other's like, okay, but that's too much. I mean, both of these are kind of coming together um, just immediately and dramatically, same kind of steering current. So, you know, we go from like, for example, we'll stop it here. What was the run prior overnight? Well, I mean, it 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 was it, it it upticked pretty significantly, but the run from last night, nothing was there. So this was the 18Z run last night. This was the run overnight, and then this is the run this morning. So I know it's hard to see, but that's a 989 millibar low, and it goes from hardly nothing to that same time frame in, in two runs. So you might think, well, if it's making such a significant and dramatic shift one way, it could go dramatically back the other. You're absolutely right, and I wouldn't second guess that. I don't, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't argue that fact at all. You, you would be exactly right. So that's why we got to watch. If we go, I said this when we had this dramatic flip um, Monday, if we can go 24 hours of consistent runs showing this, then this needs to certainly, uh, this has legs for sure. The Canadian model, you know, I'll show you this too, just to show you that it agrees I know Canadian model certainly isn't the best model to look at for the tropics, but I always like to compare the Canadian and the ICOM with the GFS and, GFS and Euro just to see if they're kind of on the same page. And it kind of follows more of the Euro, strengthens us a little bit quicker through the Lesser Antilles, but it's still kind of just a weak tropical storm. Strengthen, strengthens this in the Eastern Caribbean. It's a lot slower pace, but it eventually does get it into a hurricane, Category 1 hurricane south of Hispaniola sometime next Wednesday into Thursday makes landfall maybe into Haiti begins to weaken it obviously with the land interaction of the greater Antilles and uh, listen the only reason this thing kind of weakens into like above a thousand millibar low is just because it's going over land if you keep on going here as soon as this gets back north of Cuba kind of between Florida the Bahamas and Cuba it begins to strengthen again if we go to the last frame 10 days from now Next Saturday evening, we got a 988 millibar tropical storm strengthening as it's getting very close to Miami. So what about the icon? It's the latest icon from this morning. It only goes 120 hours out, but it already has a 1,005 millibar low starting to move into the Windward Islands, uh, Leeward Islands uh, um, next Monday. Well, this coming Monday night into Tuesday. So uh, pretty much all model guidance, guys. And if you go back and you look at the icon from last night, um, it actually is weaker, so it's actually the guidance is strengthening um, with the current model. But the latest icon gets this all the way. Same thing as the GFS Canadian Euro, uh, but just slightly different positioning, but not that much. 989 millibar tropical storm. So this is, I don't want to use the word worrisome concerning yet because it's just been about 6 to 12 hours worth of runs but man what a dramatic shift um and folks i mean if you look at the eps the the overnight mo the overnight european ensemble remember this makes up 51 members right 
So here comes all the members coming up on your screen. I know my face is kind of blocking the way I'll, I'll move this up here um, for you guys. Well, I don't want to move it too far because I'll just move it back down here and I'll, I'll be, it'll be out the way soon. So if you guys are like, dude, please put your face out the way it's, it's, it's annoying me. Uh, but give me, give me one second. So we're going to start off for actually um, this Sunday evening. So already a strong signal for a weak tropical system down here. Now we keep this going here. You know, many members going right into the Lesser Antilles. And then what happens here is, as we're starting to get into midway next week, watch how these members begin to start to recurve. The general theme here is, is there's a lot of members. I wouldn't focus too much on where they curve and where they don't. There's a lot of members. I'm not going to try to count, but this is well over half the members. There's 51 members in the EPS. Uh, you, you got that. The, also, the worrisome thing here is you got a lot of strong members. You got a lot of, um, you know, sub 960 uh, millibar low hurricanes and sub 970. Just a lot of strong members in here. A lot of hurricane members in here. And if you keep this going, and we can go all the way out to about right here. This is 10 days out. I mean, none of these really avoid land. That's the concerning thing about this. So we just got to continue to watch these trends, guys. Um, what's going to end up happening with this? We got to figure it out. And, and we, like I said, I said this earlier in the week. We're going to go from very relaxed to just kind of, you know, easy like Sunday morning, you know, looking at the regular weather patterns to full send ahead. It's that time of the year where that happens fast. So, of course, I'll be watching model guys like a, like a hawk today. Um, as it continues to come in and if it continues to look ripe and, you know, and it looks, you know, like a dangerous situation is unfolding, then we'll have another video tonight and we'll keep on pumping them out through the weekend. So let's break down what's going to happen weather-wise across the country for today. So this is what's going on right now. We got some strong atmosphere thunderstorms uh, ongoing up here in eastern North Dakota, northwestern uh, Minnesota. We had some tornadoes in South Dakota yesterday, very photogenic tornadoes too. So hopefully... Uh, nothing significant damage wise occurred with that, but it was pretty wild stuff from the storm chasers up here. Uh, we had this uh, little cyclone uh, that's bringing some rain down into Montana this morning. Energy that's uh, kind of moving south of uh, this system. This will actually bring widespread shower and storm activity across the middle of the country and a lot of tropical moisture down here in the western Gulf of Mexico. Even a lot of moisture between you know, the Florida Straits, I mean, Key West, the Florida Keys, all the way to Cuba. Got a lot of moisture hanging out. We do have a few showers and even some storms out there across the mid-Atlantic. So that's what's going on right now. Watches, warnings, advisories. If you live in the Orange Counties, that's where uh, you have heat advisories. Still going to be hot. So we got some uh, freeze warnings and, and watches up there in Montana. Uh, we have some flood watches up for sections of New Mexico. And then even Virginia. We could use the rain in Virginia. Have the potential to get a lot of it. Heat advisories in the Ohio Valley and then like around the St. Louis area also. The uh, excessive rainfall outlook, um, slight risk means that where, where you see a yellow area, that's a slight risk. That means you have a 15% chance of flash flood guidance being met within 25 miles in a given location. Some areas could get a lot of rain today. I'm surprised the, the flooding risk isn't a little bit higher down here, but I think tomorrow could be higher down here for sure. And I'll talk about why when we get down here to this time, uh, to this geographical area. But just watch out for flash flooding in the yellow area, especially. The Storm Prediction Center, a big marginal risk across the mid-Atlantic areas of the upper southeast, including West Virginia, Maryland, areas of PA, um, uh, and most of the state of Virginia and a large chunk of North Carolina. You got that slight risk up there in the upper Midwest, north central U.S. area. Uh, this goes from pretty much Des Moines all the way up to Minneapolis, La Crosse, uh, and many areas in between. Level 2 out of 5 risk, marginal risk surrounding that, level 1 out of 5 and folks, there's a pretty decent tornado risk today. I mean, there's a 5% risk of a tornado within 25 miles in a given location in Minneapolis today, higher populated region. I mean, you guys are right in the middle of this risk area. 2% risk in the green. So a pretty higher, I wouldn't say high end, but it is a higher end um, severe weather threat today. Wind threat, a 15% risk in the yellow area of winds exceeding 55 to 60 miles per hour. And the hell threat, 15% risk in the yellow area of hell exceeding one inch in diameter or larger. So this is when the video is going to get kind of weird. Um, normally I have a graphic that's much larger from Tropical Tidbits, but Tropical Tidbits is down as of about uh, 20 minutes ago. So if we're looking at this, I'm going to kind of zoom into a couple areas. Uh, starting it off this morning, 
one thing you'll notice is a lot of tropical moisture surging in um, from the south to the north across the Gulf states, especially the western Gulf states. This looks like an all-out weak tropical system down here in the western Gulf of Mexico. Pretty wild stuff. But we're going to get an influx of moisture really anywhere in the deep south. I would say the coverage will be isolated to maybe scattered at best. So, you know, I'm here in Tennessee, need some rain. You could get some scattered downpours, scattered downpours across Mississippi, Alabama, especially more so Mississippi. And Florida is going to just going to get your typical scattered downpours. And all this will just kind of dance around. And then by the time we get into the overnight hours, it'll calm down, except down here in the Gulf Coast. Speaking of the Deep South Gulf Coast line, and we'll actually zoom back into Louisiana here in a second, but I just want to really... Um, mentioned Mississippi. Mississippi could get some storms in the southern sections of the state, just isolated downpours up into Mississippi um, and Tennessee, even around Atlanta, Columbus, Georgia. It's very possible some downpour storm activity also up into especially the southern half of, of um, Arkansas and just scattered about, guys. You know, it's not going to be too, too wild. Now, as we're waking up tomorrow, this is when it could get interesting down here in the southern half of Louisiana, and we'll talk about that here shortly. But, uh, you know, kind of zooming on the Carolinas here, I do want to watch especially northern North Carolina, but, you know, it's I, I didn't even think about this until actually this morning on the way to the gym. I'm like, dang, man, we haven't got rain in almost two weeks. Um, it's it's We're going through a little bit of a dry spell in certain areas of the southeast, uh, but, you know, we, we got a lot of rain from Debbie, so it's hard to complain, but definitely some shower and storm activity that's very possible across the western Carolina is not a big deal. But up here in Virginia, down the North Carolina, these storms could pack a punch. This is getting into 10, 11 p.m. Uh, they might kind of fall apart after midnight tonight after making it to North Carolina, but we'll watch out for some storms up here in Virginia and uh, North Carolina. Moving up into the northeast, just kind of a wide look at everything. I think the immediate New England area will be quiet. As soon as you get down to Pennsylvania, PA, widespread storm activity, as you can tell, getting all the way down to the mid-Atlantic. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we could get a lot of rain. In fact, I'm, I'm surprised there's not a little bit more of a flooding risk up in the PA in Maryland. Instead, it's kind of confined to Virginia, which is a little bit more odd to me, but we'll see what happens. Uh, but just a closer look at this event today, you know, we're taking it to about early afternoon. Some storms begin to fire and we get into this evening. You know, it's like 7, 8, 9 p.m. A lot of storm activity in PA uh, down the Maryland, down the northern VA, especially eastern sections of West Virginia. And uh, some of this activity will try to get into the D.C. area around midnight. Shower stormy kind of after, uh, I'm sorry, kind of uh, overnight hours across the eastern half of Pennsylvania. Some of this will start to creep into the Poconos and the Catskills overnight. And uh, we could get some shower and downpour storm activity into New York City overnight. So you might be waking up to a wet start in New York City for your August, for your morning, of, well, for your Friday morning. So uh, just be aware of that. You know, as far as rainfall in this area, um, the National Weather Service is going for more rain down here in Virginia. You look at the latest short range model guidance, it shows most of it up here. I just, I'm a little confused by this, but. You know, it's what they're going for. They they know more than I do, believe it or not. Um, I know some people like to say, you know, Mitch, you're, you're better than the people on TV. I'm really not. I just, I just like I said a million times, I'm, I'm able to spend more time on the weather than they are. They only get about one to two minutes. Uh, but they're going for about one to two inches of rain in, in central and northern VA today. Pockets of heavy rain up here in Maryland and PA too in eastern West Virginia. So um, we continue to move forward here. And we look at the South Central U.S. at the tab. We'll pull up. There it is. And there's two things going on here. First thing I will say is you're going to get this area of storm activity that pushes through Kansas um, and Nebraska today. This will be kind of oriented uh, southwest to northeast. So, you know, this is around 10 p.m. tonight. We got some storms from New Mexico stretching all the way up to the North Central U.S. So kind of a long extension of showers and storms that's just kind of sweeping through and nothing too serious with this uh, could produce, you know, some damaging winds and some hail, but nothing too crazy with this at all. This will just kind of sweep through very slowly across the plains. And by the time we wake up tomorrow morning, we're, um, we're just dealing with some shower and storm activity and in, in, in kind of the panhandle of uh, Texas and Western Oklahoma but if you notice when I was moving this, uh, there's a lot of activity down here in Louisiana and the coastal regions of Texas. So we kind of zoom into this area. 
Big plume of tropical moisture moves in this afternoon into Baton Rouge, New Orleans. I mean, uh, you know, the, the Thibodeau area, Homa, you know, everybody down here in the swamp region. Um, we'll get some activity that gets as far north as maybe Lake Charles, uh, all the way up to Alexandria. We'll get shower and storm activity into Houston down here. This is getting into this evening. And we continue. We might get a little break overnight, and then it just ramps back up again tomorrow. And, I mean, if I kind of get this in motion, you see this little low-level spin down over here, like off the coast of Galveston? Uh, pretty wild stuff. I, I want to watch that. I wanna definitely want to watch that feature. But this is getting into tomorrow. Could be some interesting weather in Louisiana and areas of Texas. And I just do want to look at how much rainfall could fall between now and just Saturday morning, going for over a half a foot of rain between, I, I would say, Houston and... I mean, like the central coastline of Louisiana. A lot of rain is on the way. This is kind of a storyline not being talked about as much. But we could get like a moderate risk down here, especially as we're getting into tomorrow. In fact, if we kind of go and look at this, let's see what they got for tomorrow down here. Um, dang, still a slight risk? Ah, it's kind of weird. Uh, but anyways, uh, we look at day three. Yep, just still a slight risk. So uh, they might bump that up to a moderate risk. I, I think there's a potential for that. So um, up here in the north central U.S., and we will get into the upper Midwest showing the Great Lakes uh, states also. But starting it off this morning, we'll continue through about midday. We'll have some lingering storms up in northern Minnesota. And then we get into this afternoon, to this evening. This is when these storms up here could pack a little bit more of a punch, a little bit more kinematic wind flow aloft. It's going to support this severe weather threat. So a nasty line of storms could sweep through central, northern Minnesota, all the way down to southern Minnesota. I think they will not be as high-end severe-wise down into Nebraska, but could still pack a punch. And these storms look quite serious. If you just kind of are looking at the HER model, this is around 6, 7 p.m. Look at these storms heading towards northeast Minnesota. Storms moving through, you know, areas of uh, Minneapolis, and eventually they're getting into Wisconsin. These storms could pack a punch down to Iowa, too. Just not as much, I would say. Uh, but, you know, you kind of back this up and you look at the updraft Felicity swath and the rotation with these storms. And it does show some elevated rotation with this um, this line of storm so anywhere where you see kind of the colored regions here this is where uh, this particular model run is saying that there could be some rotation with these storms just because you have rotation with the storm i don't mean you're going to get a tornado but it's definitely something you need to watch out for and uh you know definitely watch out and be aware of damaging winds in this area look at the wind gust swath and it's definitely showing some nasty winds with some of these storms 40 50 60 mile per hour wind gust and you know it's really just really like zooming in on Minneapolis. So if you live in Minneapolis today, definitely be aware of some nasty storms uh, for your Thursday. We look at the upper Midwest and, you know, Michigan, Wisconsin, etc. Not a whole lot this afternoon. We got to get all the way into this evening. And this is when some, you know, severe storms are going to have an opportunity to work its way in into northwestern Wisconsin. This is 9, 10 p.m. These will make it to the UP probably closer to midnight and then kind of sweep through west to east, if you will. And uh, this will continue. As you can tell, you're starting to lose some of the, that that deep red and and orange coloring, and this is kind of starting to get more mute, more to yellow and green. This tells me that the storms will begin to weaken overnight, but we'll still get a solid push of um, uh, some some heavy rain and some rumbles of thunder, maybe some gusty winds with this, and this will kind of push through, and we'll waking up to some showers, you know, from I would say the eastern UP of Michigan all the way down Lake Michigan down to Milwaukee. And uh, we'll probably be greeted with some showers tomorrow morning in Chicago. So just be aware of this. Um, I think the worst of the weather, no doubt, will be uh, in like northwestern Wisconsin, kind of earlier in the nighttime period. Look at this. Having to do a lot of this on the fly, guys, just with the way that Tropical Tidbits is down. But definitely, you know, as you can tell, as the storms weaken, they kind of lose the damaging wind threat to them. But if you live in northwestern, even as far east as La Crosse and even down to Iowa, just some 30, 40, 50 mile per hour wind gusts are possible with some of the most intense storms. So just be aware of that. Out west, folks, there's not a whole lot going on. It's, it's a quiet weather day. Uh, we get into this afternoon, you know, maybe some showers in Arizona, a little bit more widespread in New Mexico. Everybody else, though, I mean, there's nothing to speak on. Enjoy your day. It's nice out there. Um just really not a whole lot to talk about. So 
Uh, temperatures, uh, typically I can roll through this a lot easier, but what I'm going to do here is just zoom in to like the southeast, mid-south here. And this is temperatures for the southeast today. This is actual um, high temperatures predicted by the National Weather Service, so a little bit more accurate than what I normally show you. But one thing that stands out to me is Tennessee, as you can tell. You know, around Nashville, just west, going from 99 to 100 degrees a day. Actual air temperature, I mean, mid to upper 90s across the southeast. It's just brutal heat. I mean, it, it is. They're just getting a, a late summer push, but this isn't really unusual at all, guys. I mean, this happens just about every year. Um, but you look at high temperatures today in the northeast, more fall light. There's a boundary in place, cold front kind of pushing through. Uh, so most of the northeast is nice today especially from New York State, points northeast, uh, 70s for highs is the dominant, I would say, temperature. Uh, it'll be nice. Uh, cold front is kind of just um, just nipping you guys, but not really extending very far south. And, you know, you look at the central U.S. here, this is temperatures uh, today, and definitely, definitely another hot day across the central and south central U.S., but a little bit cooler across the upper portion of the country. Um, but you look out west... And uh, nothing too brutal. I mean, it is hot in the California Valley and in the Oregon Valley, too. Uh, the northern central Rockies, not too bad. And just typical big-time heat across the southwest. So nothing too crazy here. Um, but, yeah, that's all I got. My, my cat's still uh, yelling for me. Rocket. I uh, need to let him in. But, yeah, we'll continue to tune in uh, to – I'm going to have you an update on the tropics this evening if model guidance continues to get pretty aggressive. Um, but, uh, for my fans of Rocket, I'm going to actually bring him in. Come on. And, uh, got a little visitor today. Rocket just wants to say, hey. So this is Rocket. If you never met, met him, he's, uh, he's my buddy. He's literally my best friend. So, uh, he likes to cry for me on the other side of the door. My door's right here to our room. And, um. He he's weird. He he you know he doesn't like when somebody's in the shower. Uh, he he has like a little bit of separation anxiety. So even for the kids, so we got really good animals. But anyways, that's all I got, guys. Thank y'all for tuning in. God bless all y'all. I will have you a video this evening if model guidance continues just to go crazy with the tropics. And of course, we got to keep you guys aware, especially for my folks here in the Caribbean and the shorter range. So God bless all y'all. Have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you again soon.